I'm Rob Lucuria, senior editor at Gold Derby here with writer-director John Carney. John, Laura and Son is your latest love letter to how music brings us together and makes us feel. What is it about that profound effect that music has on us that you've touched on throughout your career that you're always drawn to when you're making films like this? Um, I, I mean, doesn't music work in a really unique way in that it is, um, it's, it's, singing to somebody writing a lyric whether it's a guitar or a piano or however you do it it's probably the most vulnerable you'll ever be with someone um if you dare to do it it's it's very risky you can uh be laughed off the stage or the couch <laughs> you can write a love song for somebody and they'll look at you and just go i'm sorry i just uh i didn't feel it or you can be a songwriter that sings it to 5,000 people on a stage and they all feel that it's written for them if it's working. It's an incredibly strange, elusive three-minute three, three minute structure where it's like, it's almost like a boxing round or something, like three minutes of like your entire body, psychology, everything is on the line. And a three-minute song, it, just for some reason, I don't know what it does, but it, it, I, I wrote the line in the film that it, you know, pauses time. I believe that time, time should pause and we should all come away from a truly great song different from how we were before. I totally agree. And I love it how Flora in the film oh, pretty much has a conversion because she's arguing with Jeff about how it's just a song, who cares? But then and she has that moment of visceral emotional reaction to... Joni Mitchell, which, I mean, honestly, I don't know anyone who hasn't had that kind of reaction to that beautiful song. It's one of my faves. Um, was that part of the intention of this movie, just like your previous work, to just really emphasise the power of a beautiful song and what it can do to you emotionally, physically, mentally, all of that? Yeah, it was a bit of that, but it's more, this film was more about the idea of um, somebody teaching you to look at an art form in a deeper way. And I never had that problem with music because I got that very early with my brother and my family. So I've been listening to music my whole life. And I am amazed when people will listen to crappy music. And I hear people yeah. and they're like listening and I'm like, wow, why would you do that to yourself? Yeah. And I feel like they need an education. I'm not the person to give it to them because I'm an annoying, uh, self-righteous mansplainer. But I, I'm very open to the idea. Like if somebody describes, a, I don't know a lot about painting, but if I go to a gallery and I'm with somebody who knows a lot about painting and they point something out to me that I missed or overlooked, I'm grateful. I don't feel mansplained or womansplained or anything. I feel like, Jesus, that person knows what they're talking about. I did not see that red dot in the corner that exposes that whole picture for what it is. Or I did not, I thought that was rubbish, but it turns out to be a van someone from a Dutch master yeah. or whatever. Wow. And I'm very naive when it comes to that, but I like being naive and I like being educated. And I also get that once it's explained to you, why would you have a piece of crap on your wall? Yeah. Uh, but, but Absolutely. with music, you, you, it's different because you know, it, 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 music does a different thing. You can listen to crappy music cause it's like pumping and you're on the treadmill in the gym. It's shit. You know, it is, but it's doing something else. But I yeah. think it's very important to have those lines drawn very, very carefully with music so that at least when you're listening to rubbish, you know it's rubbish. And so I was really interested in the idea that that Eve, that the character of Flora in this movie kind of thought music was just sort of like atmosphere. It was like something that you played on the bus to get you into work and it was in gyms and they, they play it in hotel foyers and she never really thought where it came from. And it's I think a lot of young people have that now because they have such access to music, they almost take it for granted. It's everywhere you go. But when you start to think about where it comes from, um, it, it, it's very interesting. And I just love the idea that I could try and take a character who really didn't think about that. And then slowly you started to see her um, being exposed to all this wonderful music by somebody who's not himself a great musician, but he's a good teacher. I, I thought yeah. that was a kind of that. So that's where I'm kind of coming at with this film. Yeah, and I love that. And, you know, I mean, the tunes she's listening to as she's, at the, at, you know, on the 
public transport or at the party, at the rave or whatever it is, the nightclub. They're great. But then as she yeah. starts to really delve deeper and she sees her son, what he's creating, and then, of course, the, the film culminates in a beautiful high life song. It really gave me an appreciation for how music can um, make such a difference in your life. I'm really interested in how Eve Houston came on board because she really blew me away. I only knew her from Bad Sisters. Yeah. And uh, she just gives this great performance of strength and confidence, but this vulnerability that's kind of in her eyes and under the surface. What what did what attracted you most to casting her in the, in the film? I mean, so she um, it's it's a rare th when, when you get an actor who can um, take so because I wrote this part as a salty, messy woman who was neither good nor bad. Uh, but sometimes, you know, I wrote, I gave her like dialogue that like she got in the way of herself with and tripped herself up and she was outspoken, but she was also quite rude. But then she was kind of funny and the humor undercut the rudeness. And then she was arrogant and then she was dismissive and then she was rude again. And then she, it's one thing to write that stuff and you write it and you think you're a genius because you're like, oh, look, I wrote a really complex character who was like not black or white or good or bad or whatever. There's one thing writing that, but when you get an actor who can actually manifest that and play that on screen, you you bite the hand, the feet, you know, you 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 take that straight away. Right. And it became very quickly clear to me that Eve was the only actor that I knew that, that in Ireland that could do all of that could take a character who could bring you through all those feelings in every scene where you kind of hate her and then you laugh at her and then you kind of love her a bit and then you hate her again and then she's like, why did you say? And you're just so perplexed by her. That's that's one thing to write, but it's a real hell of a thing to act. And if you find an actor who can do it, you know, you're you're you're, you're blessed. Yeah, happy days. But like she's really, really compelling, and I really enjoyed her performance. And she could have been really brutal or annoying, but that unfortunately, yeah. for the, she's not. Yeah, somehow um, she's not. Yeah. Yeah. So you've collaborated with Gary Clark, obviously, before on Sing Street, one of my favourite films, and Modern Love, which Thank I also you. really love. What do you most value about working with him creatively? Uh, he makes some of my music look good. <laughs> no, he uh, he's not precious. He it, Because this isn't his gig, you know, it's not his band or his his own solo career as a, as a songwriter. It's something different. It's like... Um, it's it requires a humility um that you sometimes don't get so much with songwriters um mm. to be able to say okay if that didn't work what do you need or what verse do you need or what it's rolling up your sleeves and and giving you a song and work you know and the really good songwriters and musicians that i have come to know in my life roll up their sleeves and it's work and it's it's not precious and it's not the magical inspirational thing that we think it must be when we listen to great songs. The great songwriters know that you can't be inspired every time you sit down to work. It's just exhausting and you couldn't you, you couldn't live like that. Mostly you maybe do that once or twice in your life early on. But from then on, it's like, OK, I got to I got to go and work. I'll be upstairs with the guitar or the piano or the Pro Tools or whatever it is I'm working. And um the good ones know that and they don't mind having to, to do to, to look at it like a job of work. And so with these films that myself and Gary are doing, you know, we have 10 things to write. They have to be very specifically tailored to the character and the plot and the drama. Um, they're not your songs or my songs. They're the character songs. Mm. Um, and yeah. I think, you know, he's great at doing that. And he's he's you know, he's uh, he enjoys doing it. It's not like a, it doesn't feel like um, a strain for him to do it. Well, that feel, sounds like to me, it kind of frees you up to just maybe take some risks and some chances. And I'm curious yeah. whether when you're deploying music in your films, so, given that so many of your films, um, you know, music is at the center, is it entirely story driven or do you often want to punctuate certain emotional cues? How does that work in your process? I think it's a little bit like, um, you know the way like scaffolding, you know, when you see like old buildings being built in the past, they would build a scaffold in the shape of the building, but there's no building. And then they put the building around the scaffolding 
and then at some stage they can take the scaffolding away and the building stays up on its own now. And I think the movies are a little bit like that in the sense of like, I have a script and I have songs. Neither is a full album or a full movie yet. They're, but you, put them, you start to put them together and you realize, oh, I didn't need that piece of script. And you take out that piece of script and it stays up. And then you realize, oh, I didn't need a song. You take that song out and it still stands up. And you do that to the point of just before it crumbling and falling apart. And that's when I say I have a movie to make. When those two things are like weirdly intertwined, they're supporting each other and they stay up. Um, but I don't over explain the plot or the story in terms of scenes and dialogue. But I also don't just throw music at it. So it's like a jukebox musical. I try and get the two things to sort of support each other. Yeah. My final question is, is um, how you react to when you see audiences really getting into your film. So once was so hugely successful, it won an Oscar for that beautiful song. Um, yeah. Begin Again was also nominated at the Oscars. And Flora and Son got such an amazing um, reaction when it screened at Sundance earlier this year. How does that make you feel? Is that just validation? Are you, are you always worried about how your film is going to be um, received by audiences and critics? Yeah, yeah, I I am. And it's very, it's very nice to hear it responded to in that way. And the main thing that's nice about it is that, you know, it's likely to do this everywhere now. Because it's not like a play where you could have a bad night. It's probably this is the kind of it's going to be okay. You know, you're going to be okay. And um, yeah, no, it's it's a lovely feeling. And it's a very nice feeling these days for whereas like with modern love that you mentioned there. I never saw any reaction to that because it's TV. So I have no idea. I mean, I have tweets and stuff like that, but I don't have laughter or whatever. In a cinema, watching a movie with an audience, it's, it, it is magical. And it's quite rare because we make so much TV and so many people are watching stuff at home and in all these different formats. And it's almost, it's a trans it's a transcendent sort of moment on the rare occasions that I'm in a cinema, like sitting there quietly watching this audience is like, Jesus, we're getting away with this. And actually people are enjoying themselves and like having a, having a good time, but it is, it's nerve wracking and it's pointless being nervous about it. Cause there's nothing you can do about it. It's, it's recorded. Yeah. It's done. It's in the yeah, game exactly. it's to the gods. But look on that note, John, congratulations. On a really great film. I really enjoyed this one. And um, thank you for your time today. Thanks a million. Cheers. Thanks for spreading the word. 